Hi, I'm Phil Conkle and I'm an orthopedic surgeon. I work for Aurora Advanced Healthcare. My specialty practice is in the field of hand surgery. I met a patient, Lori, who I'd known for years as she had worked for our group doing physical therapy with symptoms of numbness and tingling in the hands and weakness and pain. She had treated this as most people do, watching to see if it would get worse, and of course it did. She had some diagnostic tests done and it showed that she had carpal tunnel syndrome. Lori came to surgery. Surgery was completely successful. She's now back practicing physical therapy and she's very, very pleased with her outcome. Lori came to see me with numbness in her hands. She'd had the numbness for a long time. The numbness was gradually getting worse. It became concerning when she couldn't get her hands to wake up anymore. People with carpal tunnel syndrome frequently will have very mild symptoms and they may have those symptoms for weeks, months, or even years. Generally, the hands fall asleep, they go numb and tingly, thumb index and long finger are most likely affected. A lot of people hand and wake them up sleepy at night, but consistently over and over continue to bother them. There may or may not be pain with carpal tunnel syndrome. The numbness and tingling might be intermittent, but then become worse. And there may also be weakness with carpal tunnel syndrome. A lot of people will complain of loss of dexterity. In other words, they drop things or they can't feel things they once could. Buttoning buttons is difficult, threading a needle is difficult, knitting is difficult, anything involving fine hand dexterity. Pain should not be something that is a concern because you don't have to have pain to have carpal tunnel syndrome and you don't have to have pain to have severe changes in the carpal tunnel. If you have numbness in the hands, that persists and, is, and persists over and over and over again starts to wake you up from sleep at night, affects the activities you do during your daily life, and or causes pain, the numbness won't go away, or you notice weakness or loss of dexterity, you should be evaluated by a doctor. Carpal tunnel syndrome may require surgery, but treatments can be very effective at relieving the symptoms of carpal tunnel, and so it's not necessary that you may end up with an operation. Frequently, cortisone injections can help, therapies can help, splints can help and a lot of people can live a long time without needing surgery. You know, it's a lot of misconception about the cause of carpal tunnel syndrome, and most of the time we don't really know what causes it, but we do know several things. Number one, it's more common as people get older. Number two, it happens to be more common in ladies than in men for unknown reasons, and certain diseases predispose people to developing carpal tunnel. Arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, hypothyroidism that's not been treated, and diabetes mellitus. Now, I'll see people who say they can't believe they have carpal tunnel syndrome because they never worked on a computer. And it's probably a misconception that keyboarding or computer work causes carpal tunnel syndrome. People with carpal tunnel can aggravate their symptoms with monotonous or repetitive activities, but whether or not there's an actual cause relationship is pretty unlikely and never really been truly strongly established. If your doctor recommends surgery for carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, don't be afraid. It's not a major operation. It literally takes about 10 minutes for the procedure. Most of the time it can be done with local anesthetics or regional anesthetics. You may be a little bit sleepy like you would for other diagnostic tests, but not completely asleep and it's very low blood loss, the success rate is extremely good. The recovery is rather quick. Most people are back to their normal activities within about 10 days. Some people with heavy laboring occupations do require a little longer to heal because you can imagine a scar in the palm of your hand being a little tender, handling tools, and there's also a little bit of weakness that goes along with the recovery. But for the vast majority of people, complete recovery is expected or significant improvement is expected, and they usually go on to have very functional hands.